tell them and what to do basically so let's uh, see what is the yeah floaters what are what are these floaters i'm sure most of uh, us have experienced floaters at some point in time they are small mobile disturbances in the field of view so wherever we see we can actually see these small either dots like it's shown in this picture like this or a dot surrounded by a patch or a fly kind of a substance or even a thread kind of a thing or fingerprints kind of things they can be of varying size and shape they can be of varied patterns as well and it is typically seen against a bright or a white background like when you see it uh, into an open sky or a white or an off white colored wall which is well lit you can actually distinguish or observe these uh, floaters so how do they appear i mean when do they when do you start seeing them they can be single or multiple they usually ap appear suddenly i guess they didn't have any and suddenly today i am seeing one or two of them the one thing that is really problematic or kind of uh kind of an irritant is that they can persist forever uh, so they are of varying size and shape the size and the size matters like when it goes closer to the uh, retina it becomes bigger and it goes away, away from the retina it becomes smaller and it also moves with the movement of the eyeball so whenever you move or you see somewhere when you follow the gaze with the lag period it also moves and when you shift back it comes back with a lag period very size very rarely it can sometimes be associated with a flash of light flash of light means an arc of light which is seen at the edges of your field of view typically seen in darkness like when you switch off your light to go to bed in the night you might see a flash uh, it is difficult to explain it to someone who hasn't seen it but a person who has seen it or observed it can definitely say okay this is the one so let us come to the causes of floaters the most common causes of floaters are what is called as a vitreous degeneration there is a gel inside the eyeball called as vitreous which is homogeneous that is like it is uniform in its texture at birth and in young age as we grow older like we start growing 25 30 years of age the uniformity of the vitreous gel is lost so at places it the gel becomes either liquid or solid so that uniformity is lost so when that happens the places at which it becomes more solid or solidified or dense can appear as a degenerated vitreous or symptomatically it can appear as a floater it can also happen so when this this process of degeneration keeps on increasing and uh, when the vitreous gel is quite heterogeneous like more non uniform than earlier it tends to separate from the retina until then it is attached throughout the retina all around at some point in time which can happen at 30 years of age at 45 at 60 at 65 at it can happen at any given point of time it tends to separate from the surrounding attached retina that is when it is called as a posterior vitreous detachment posterior is behind back vitreous detachment the back of the vitreous body which is attached to the retina tends to detach from the surrounding vitreous surrounding retina it can also floaters can also happen when there are retinal tears or a detachment the retina can get torn away either due to injuries or due to diabetic problems or even while having a pvd or posterior vitreous detachment when the vitreous body or gel is more firmly adherent to the surrounding retina it tends to tug or pull on them and cause the cause that tear it can also be due to bleeding in the eye called as vitreous hemorrhage and this vitreous hemorrhage can be due to most commonly diabetic retinopathy or other retinal blood disorders retinal blood vessel disorders like uh, uh, retinal vein occlusions and things like that uveitis or inflammation in the eye can also cause lot of uh, dots or floaters in the eye so what do we do when we see a new floater or first time when we see a floater it is quite disturbing or annoying to to say because yesterday i am fine now wherever i see i can see that dot it's quite funny 
and it can be quite distracting and, and annoying so what do we what do i do so first of all is to relax not to be worried because in more than 90% of the cases uh, it is not it is not going to cause a problem but you need to confirm that with a retinal surgeon so the simplest thing that you do is visit an eye hospital like ours and report to the retinologist or the retinal surgeon he or she will check your retina after dilation i'm sure most of us are familiar with this procedure where we put drops into the eye to widen the pupil so that the edges of the retina are uh, visible because because the edges of the retina i mean most of the defects in the retina are around the uh, around the edges of the retina this dilation becomes necessary and many a times the surgeon might use an instrument to press the eye to check the retina because when we see the retina the edges of the retina comes to around 100 to 210 degrees it's not even 180 degrees so when you see here in the retina this plane is 180 degrees the retina is further back so in order to see that we need to press the eyeball from one side and try to check like i am seeing i am doing in this photograph so you don't have to be really scared about that it's not a very painful procedure or anything <clears throat> it only looks scary but it is a simple uh, clinical evaluation which can be done based on that whatever we see or diagnose we will tell you what uh, treatment needs to be done so basically whatever is the cause of the problem you need to treat it so as i alluded to earlier the most common causes are vitreous degeneration followed by posterior vitreous detachment both of them do not require any treatment so in as i said in more than 90% of the cases we don't require any treatment however if there are these other disorders like tears or detachment of the retina or retinal bl blood vessel disorders either due to diabetes or blood pressure or uveitis they need to be treated according to the cause and the treatment will obviously entail either laser or injections into the eye or tablets or injections in cases of uveitis so the most important thing here is like i i have seen many patients over the years i have seen many i won't say patients because they don't have a disease i have seen many individuals who come to us with uh, persistent floaters for years together and they are still worked up about it they are still anxious worried about it and they are so kind of preoccupied by that floater that they keep on worrying and they keep on visiting so many doctors and the issue is like that no doctor is actually offering any treatment because obviously there is no disease there see if you develop a tag in your skin which you generally develop after 25 30 40 years of age it is not a disease it's a normal aging phenomenon if you develop graying of hair it is not a disease if you develop reading glasses at, after 40 that is not a disease it's just a normal aging phenomenon whereas a diabetic retinopathy is a disease but most of the cases like i said earlier in floaters there is no disease it's just a normal age related degeneration that happens inside the eye like it happens in any other part of the body so these don't require treatment that is why here counseling helps in fact as a retinal surgeon who operates on the retina which is a very very delicate part of the eye i've i've been having floaters in both my eyes for the last 17 18 years five of them on the right three of them on my left and i operate i do micro surgeries on microscopes they are really critical surgeries and until date it hasn't disturbed so that is where counseling makes a lot of difference i mean i always repeatedly tell my again and they are not patients they are individuals who have vitreous degeneration that it is not a disease and the best way to treat them is to ignore them many a times you have to make friendship with them learn to live with them that's the best way to go ahead with it so uh, the important take home messages today are floaters are mostly age related most of them require only reassurance like i keep telling my telling my the people who visit my clinic better to learn to live with them and once the disturbance happens either due to vitreous degeneration or posterior vitreous detachment or diabetic retinopathy related bleeding or uveitis it might not clear completely so you will have to learn to live with them so those 
floaters once they have appeared even in terms of ubi days when you, even despite maximum aggressive treatment those dots occasional dots will remain occasional floater will remain so don't expect the vision to be kind of uh, the clear of all floaters that is not our end point our end point is to ensure that the floaters are not an evidence of something else in the eye which is sight threatening floaters themselves aren't sight threatening aren't vision threatening so we don't have to work towards clearing the uh, floaters all together so that is what i wanted to share with you if you people still have any questions or queries with respect to floaters you're most uh, welcome to visit our website www.shakerihospital.com we are also uh, available on facebook youtube twitter and instagram most quest more questions are welcome and i'm i would be really happy to answer them uh, according to my uh, so i would like to end uh, my uh, thing i mean uh, sharing the presentation but i think we have a few questions here which i would like to take up so someone has asked can we prevent floaters well as i told you uh, the most common cause would be due to aging and if we can prevent aging or reverse aging then yes we can prevent floaters but in those the other 10% of the cases where it is due to either diabetes related complications or blood pressure or uv itis of course good management of diabetes and control of uh, blood pressure and regular checkup due to uv itis can definitely prevent further worsening of the floaters and someone is asking can floaters be cleared completely as i told you earlier that is not our end point that is not our goal to clear the uh, vitreous of all floaters and make it um, absolutely like what we were at the age of 5 years or 4 years because that one thing is it's not necessary see imagine we are driving our car and there is a small speck of dust or a, or a, we have driven through a dense forest so there is a fly which has come and uh, stuck to our uh, uh, window i mean the front uh, glass so that that is definitely not necessary to remove that you don't have to remove that you don't have to uh, clear the uh, dot or the fly from your screen because it essentially isn't disturbing your driving you can just ignore that dot or the fly and can still drive comfortably but if you keep observing that fly or the dot and try to uh, and if you miss the road you can actually end up with an accident so you don't have to be i mean the best way to deal with it is to ignore it what is the role of breakdown of floaters by laser so yes there are people who have tried laser to break down these floaters uh, some people are really troubled by a big floater because when it is moving around and suddenly it comes in front they generally have a blurred vision which might disturb their reading or writing or whatever activity they are doing for a few minutes until it passes off from the center so in those cases yes we can try out uh, breaking down those uh, really big floaters with with, uh, with laser but the issue with that is uh, whatever used to be a single uh, floater once we break it down it can become a multiple uh, problem i mean it can break down into and lead into multiple floaters and if that happens some people get more affected by it so i don't do um, break laser breakdown of floaters regularly uh, but some people yes they do try it out so as I, i mean this is a fairly common question the next one which is that do any food or nutritional supplements help of course not i mean they don't help directly but when you have good food or take uh, nutritional supplements in terms of antioxidants and vitamins and zinc uh, which are in big craze today because of corona uh, they do definitely probably delay the uh, pace of degeneration that is happening across the body you know i mean not only in the vitreous but ev everywhere else also maybe uh, the uh, the speed with which we are degenerating or we are aging is probably a bit slower when we have good food and uh, good nutritional supplements including vitamins and zinc and uh, antioxidants so are there any home remedies unfortunately there are no no home remedies the best home remedy or hospital remedy is to ignore them and how frequently should i get my eye checkup done for floaters 
so see as i told you if there is no recent change in the pattern of your floaters then just don't bother but however if you are a diabetic or a or you have already been i mean your known patient of uveitis or you are a known patient of retinal vein occlusion or some other retinal disorder or you have high minus power you are wearing glasses more than 2 3 and all that then periodic checkups are certainly advised but if you are otherwise absolutely fine you don't wear glasses you are not a diabetic you don't have problem and there is that occasional floater which has been there for last 15 20 years and it hasn't changed in the recent past you don't need to be really concerned about it what you need to observe is a change any change can be significant so like until now you have had only single floater suddenly after a flash of light you see a shower of floaters or one side field of vision is uh, blurred it something like a screen is appearing uh, anything of that sort you can immediately get it checked by a retina specialist so otherwise if there is a if there are pre existing floaters and have remained in the eye for a very long time take it easy just chill there's no problem okay i think that comes to the end of the questions that have been asked so if, as i keep reiterating if there are still any more questions you can definitely uh, visit our website or uh, contact us on facebook youtube twitter or instagram i hope this was informative thank you so much and have a nice day and stay safe